Anime is an incredible medium, never shying away from a wacky or crazy idea and constantly evolving decade after decade. But just because you've got the ability and the money to create something doesn't always mean that you should. My name is Isla and this is my review of Production IG and DLE's Sword Guy The Animation. There is a backstory to this anime before we even get into the story itself. Sword Guy is based on a manga that was meant to have its anime adaption air just under two years ago. However, it was constantly pushed back until Netflix decided to stream it worldwide. Unlike other Netflix originals like Devil Man and Be the Beginning, they actually didn't have a lot of involvement in the production of this anime. And my good god, does that show. Okay, so strap yourself in for one slop of a plot. So the story takes place in Japan, maybe in the future, who knows, to be honest it doesn't really matter and it's never talked about. Since ancient times legends have arisen about swords forged by gods or dragons or some other mythological ilk. Like most legends, evil lurks in the shadows, and these swords are the very epitome of demons themselves. If a person takes hold of one of these weapons, they will be possessed by them, becoming either a chrysolite or a busona. The chrysolite are able to maintain their human bodies and emotions, forgoing the thirst of blood and death that the demon sword inside them desires. The Busona, well, they're this. This thing. Look at this thing in 2D space. Now, I don't have a problem with 3D animation, in fact, I think it looks great in a lot of occasions, but when it looks as disjointed and out of place as it does here, I really don't like it. And also, the mechish designs, while they're cool, they feel massively contradictory to everything else going on in the show. Anyway, in the opening episode, which is used mostly as an origin story, we are introduced to one of these swords, which takes possession of a woman. Realising she has killed everyone in sight, she hangs herself in a forest, but not before giving birth to her baby, and then leaving this cursed demon sword in his possession, because, you know, a mother's love and all that. The baby is Guy, and he's a sword guy! Seriously, if you read the description of the show, half of his arm gets cut off in later life, and then the sword he cradled as a baby is then forged into his new arm? That's a thing? Anyway, he must be up there on the list of the most bland and lifeless characters that have ever been characterised in anime. If his name literally wasn't part of the title of this show, I would have forgotten it. The other characters aren't much better and there are a lot of them to remember because this show throws them at you like there's no tomorrow. And there isn't a tomorrow for most of them because you see them one second and then they're gone the next. There's no room to care about them because there's no care afforded to them. Most of the characters are filled with anger and fueled with rage, taken over by these swords in a moment of murderous intent. And these random characters take up most of the time afforded to this show's 12 episode run. Where did our protagonist go? Oh, oh there he is! Oh, oh no wait, he's gone. Okay fine, I guess I'll watch this character transform into a whole other character with zero explanation as to why and we will see her for max three minutes and then she is gone and never appears in the show again. What? But I will give this show its dues. Hidden in the rubble, rising from the ashes, is Seiya Ishijo, a true gem of a man. There is one episode that touches on his backstory and it's really nice. I liked it, it was my favourite episode, and I also liked him, and so why isn't he the protagonist? In all honesty, this anime is funny, in a really bad way. Like a cheesy 80s cartoon that you love to love and love to hate, but it's not a fun watch. If you love the manga, then I'm afraid you've got a poor adaption here. However, the animation is not half bad. Nothing special or standout particularly happens that makes you go, wow, that was amazingly animated, but it serves its purpose well enough. The soundtrack is so forgettable that I actually forgot I had a soundtrack, however, the actual voice acting is decent in both the sub and the dub. Props to the ADR director Steve Staley for adapting the script to fit English dialogue. There is a scene when one of the many characters has an interaction with a bunch of other pointless side characters that is so inherently Japanese it wouldn't have worked or made sense in English, but the script was adapted to fix that. Attention to detail like this in dubs is really appreciated. Shame they had to adapt a pretty terrible script. Lastly, as I round off my review, my favourite part about this anime was that it didn't even have an ending. There is no explanation. We were literally in the middle of a fight and it didn't even feel like a cliffhanger. The show just ends. That's it. It's over. Like the team sat around a meeting room one day trying to figure out an ending and they couldn't, so they just didn't. <laughs> and so, very much in the spirit of Sword Guy the Animation, I'm just gonna... <laughs> Meta